One of the most important topics to us today is money and wealth. Who does not want money? Every one of us needs money and wants money. So money is such a big deal that the Bible talks on money more than any other topics. So the questions that we're going to answer this morning. Can Christians be rich? How are Christians supposed to acquire wealth and spend their money? Let's answer these questions by reading or by looking at the book of James in chapter 5, verses 1 to 6. So let's just read the passage first. Now listen, you rich people, weep and wail because of the misery that is, that is coming on you. Your wealth has rotted and moths have eaten your clothes. Your gold and silver are corroded. Their corrosion will testify against you and eat your flesh like fire. You have heard, hoarded wealth in the last days. Look, the wages you failed to pay the workers who mowed your fields are crying out against you. The cries of the harvesters have reached the ears of the Lord Almighty. You have lived on earth in luxury and self-indulgence. You have fattened yourself in the day of slaughter. You have condemned and murdered the innocent one who is not opposing you. So before we continue, can, I, can we please all stand and pray? Let's ask the Holy Spirit to guide us and help us understand the word. Father in heaven, thank you very much for this wonderful day, Lord. Thank you very much for the wonderful worship, Lord. You are the ancient of days, Lord. You are magnificent, Lord. You are glorious, Lord. We praise and worship you this morning, O God. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of life. We are very thankful that we are alive today, Lord God. That we are free to worship you in spirit and in truth, Lord. Right now, we invite you in this place, Lord Holy Spirit, that you will open our minds open our hearts to listen to your message that we may apply everything that you want to tell us this morning, O oh God. Truly, O oh God, you deserve to be praised. You want us to be more like you and we pray, help us, Lord, to be more like you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. We lift you up everything in Jesus' name. All this we pray. Everybody say, Amen and Amen. Okay, the passage for this morning is very short, but very important. Okay, sometimes we say, "I we already know about money." Dapat ana but sometimes we need to be reminded because it's good to be reminded of the Word of God so that we will have the proper perspective in life. Okay, let's proceed. Um, okay, in verse one. Okay, verse 1. Sabi niya, now listen. Now listen. Um, sabi ni Saya, paminaw ka mo. So if you notice, this is the second time James used the words, now listen. The first time, yung last Sunday, chapter 4, verse 13. Diba? Remember? Now listen, you who say, today or tomorrow, we will go to this or that city, spend a year there, carry on business and make money. So now listen. Magtingala mo, nga na listen man. Well, at that time, kasagaran mga good mga audience ni James, illiterate, hindi sila kabasa. That is why, ang mga letters nila, they are being read in the lector in front of the synagogue. So, being read. That's why, uh, now listen. No? And then, it shows some urgency okay, sa audience ni James. And then, ang address ni James, you rich people. Okay, the, the question is, is, who is the rich people that James is talking about? Is it the believers or unbelievers? Well, James is addressing the rich outside the church or those who are unsaved. Because if you remember in the last few chapters, mahilig si James, my brothers, my brethren, mahilig 
when he say my brothers, that message is for believers. But karon, uh, wala siya gibutang. You rich people. Another clue that we can get that he's uh, uh, addressing to rich unbelievers is the, the following phrase. Sabi niya, weep and wail because of the misery that is coming on you. Unsay pasabot ng coming misery? It refers to the punishment of God that will happen to these rich people on the day of judgment. So, this could not refer to believers kasi ang believers, di ba, once we accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we are saved by the blood of the Lamb. Okay? So, there is no more condemnation. There is no more punishment on the day of judgment. But, we will still be judged. The, uh, the Lord will see if we are faithful, then we will get the rewards. But, uh, we will not be condemned to go to hell if we have Jesus in our hearts. But even though James is addressing this to the rich unbelievers, the principles would also apply to us Christians, how we deal with money. So you may ask, wait a minute, is James saying that being rich, uh, uh, I mean, these rich people are being punished just because they are rich? Well, being rich is not a sin, per se. Being rich is not sin. Dili sala ang daghan kwarta. Because there are lots of rich believers in the Bible. If we just, we just look at the Bible lang. For example, Abraham. Abraham was very rich. Diba? We have discussed about Abraham last year. Sobrang yaman niya. Yet he walked with God. He was great, greatly blessed by God and uh, God used him to be a blessing to the whole world. And then kisa pa si Isaac. Diba? Joseph. Although Joseph started out as a slave sa Egypt, but eventually he rose from the ranks. Gihimo siyang right hand Potiphar. Second to Poti- uh, sorry, second to Pharaoh. So he's very, very rich. And there, God has no problem with that. King David. There was a time that he was very rich. King Solomon. He was filthy rich. He's one of the richest man in the world. So even in the New Testament, we have Barnabas, the companion of Paul. He was very rich. And then Joseph of Arimathea, siya yung follower ni Jesus, nung namatay si Jesus, he lent his tomb to Jesus for burial. He was very rich. And in fact, Mary, Martha, and Lazarus, they were very rich. Because at that time, nice story that they threw a banquet and they have a large house. Obviously, if you have a large house, they must be rich. So you see, being rich is not sin. Because if God, God can choose to bless people with wealth. So what James is warning are those rich people who think that their wealth will save them from pain and suffering from the judgment to come. Because some rich are thinking, ah, I am very secure in this world, but they do not know that the time will come, the Lord will come and judge them, and they will go to hell. Okay? So, let's continue. In verse 2, sabi niya, your wealth has rotted, and moats have eaten your clothes. Mga daot na ang inyong bahandi, o pangot kuton sa gagmay na mananak ang inyong mga bisti. Okay, if you notice, okay, if you notice, ha, uh, James is not saying your wealth will rot. Lantawa yung ano. James is not saying that your wealth will rot or moats will eat your clothes or your gold and silver will corrode. Ang igamit has rotten. Have eaten. So as if uh, James, James is not referring, uh, is not using the future tense but parang present tense. So although the rich do not know it, Karun palang naghinahinay na nagrat ang ilang wealth, ang ilang mga bahandi. So James is speaking in prophetic sense. It is certain that riches will rot. So he is speaking with certainty that it is sure to happen. Okay? And then sa pagingon niya, verse three. Your gold and silver are corroded. Karon, na yung mga pilosopo, di ba ang, ang 
ang corroded, may sabot na uh, uh, mga taya, mga pilosopo, di ba? Di ba ang, ang iron ra, ang bakal, ang putha, uh, puthaw ra ang magtaya? Di ba ang gold and silver will not corrode? Well, James is not speaking scientifically, but he is speaking as a figure speech. Pasabot na na, kanyang mga gold, silver and gold, they will fade away. So all our money, our beautiful clothes, our gold, our jewelries, all of these are temporary. They will all fade away. Kanyang pasabot na, dili, uh, let's not take it scientifically. Okay? And then, ang sa niya, let's continue. Their corrosion will speak against you and eat your flesh like fire. Okay. Okay, this is just a figure speech. It's not literal na ang atong mga wealth uh, will uh, I mean sunugunta. It does, it does not mean that way. What what may what James meant is that those rich who are misusing their riches will erode their character. Those rich who are misusing their wealth will erode their character. You know, ang mga ang riches could be a poison, could be. And it could infect and eat the person alive. Kasi money is neutral. Money is neutral. But if money is being misused, it could ruin a person's character. Makadaot siya sa character sa usa ka tao. Okay, let's cite for example para masabtan na to. Di ba si Abraham? We talk about Abraham. Abraham was very rich. But he maintained his character. Wala na affect yung character. But look at his nephew. Remember, nagdungan siya si Abraham and Lot. Di ba? They went to the land which God told them. Nagdungan sila. And then they parted ways. And then ingon ni Abraham, okay, mamili ka. Where do you want to go? And then Lot chose Sodom and Gomorrah because that is parang the prime city. Uh, the parang very rich city. So what happened to Lot? He's, he changed. No? Because he, ha- he loved the money, he changed. I remember when the men of the city went to his house and saying that give uh, us the visitors so that we can know them. And then sabi ni Lot, okay, here are my daughters. So makita ni mo, nalahi na iyang uh, thinking, perspective in life na He's willing to give his own daughters to be raped by the visitors uh, to save the the two angels, the two visitors. So makita ni mo, kasi tita buo yung character. It's because of his love of money, na, 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 na twisted na yung moral character. So so let's be careful. No, makadaot ang kwarta. It could destroy a person's character. Okay, and then let's continue. Sabi niya, you have hoarded wealth in the last days. Uh, sabi niya sa pa, kaanugon lang ang inyong pagtigong kay ang kalibutan hapit na gayod matapos. Let's be clear. James is not against saving money. Okay? There is nothing sinful about saving So there is a difference between saving and hoarding. Remember, uh, let's look at, um, uh, oh, sorry, in Proverbs chapter 6, verse 6, sabi go to the ant, you sluggard, consider its ways and be wise. So ingon sa Proverbs, kamo mga tapulan, observahe o katuni ang pagkinabuhi sa mga lamigas aron mag maalamon kamo what do you mean by that because you know you and gamay ra sila but kugihan kay sila they will save up during rainy days so the same is true with christians we have to save for rainy days and while it's true that we should trust god for our daily needs it doesn't mean that uh, we have to spend all that we have now and then bala na si lord ugma That, that's a wrong attitude because that's unwise. That's unwise. Trusting in God does not mean that we have to enjoy today and don't worry about tomorrow. No. 
We save not because we worry about tomorrow, but because it's a wise thing to do. Okay? And uh, we save, obviously, not only for our own self, but for our family and loved ones. Magtigom ta. That is why we should not spend beyond what our means. Kung dako ang imong uh, ginansya, dako po din mong ilabat. Save. Pag gamay ra, di gamay ra po, at least we have to save. So it doesn't mean that we have to use up everything that we own. In fact, the Bible in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 14, nakaingon dere, children should not save up for their parents, but parents for their children. Okay. What This is the culture sa Philippines. Uh, ang atong kultura, mga God, di ba? Ang ginikanan, but Diba? Support ka. Pero pagdako nila, pagdako ng mga bata, ang ginigahan, mag-retire, musalig sa mga bata. But, the Bible says that it's not the obligation of children to save up for parents. But rather, it's the parents who should save up for the children. I think I have discussed this before. Ang problema, mga God, we will be I know this is a very sensitive issue kasi basi daghan mo suko but this is what the bible teaches kasi ang mahitabo mangga this is the, what is wrong ko ang ginikanan pag abot sa panahon ano mag uh, ano ba, they are still healthy but they will retire and let their kids earn money to support them what will happen is that the kids will not have enough to build a family di ba imagine mga uh, mga bata ka, mga, mga professional ka mo, mo abroad, and then they don't have enough money to save for their own. They have to send it to their relatives, musalig. Okay? In fact, it's not their obligation. It's the obligation of the parents to support their children. That's in the Bible. Now, wh- while you say, ah, lahat mo ng kultura ng mga Hudyo at Pilipino, but this is a Bible principle. And I think it's wise also. But uh, because as, as parent, uh, you have to make sure na dili ka pabigat sa imong anak, so that ang imong anak, when they grow up, they can be self-sufficient. They can uh, have money for their own family. Because it will going to be a cycle. Because karon, uh, magretire sa yung ginikanan, magsalig sa mga anak. Pagabot ang panahon, magdiso ng mga anak, kay supporta ng ginikanan, supporta ng iyang pamilya. Pag-abot ng panahon, pag tiguang na siya, mo-retire na po siya, and then ang anak na po niya maglisod. So it will become a cycle. That's why we have a cycle of poverty. Because, I mean, uh, the person has not enough to support themselves. Kasi daghan kay siyang suportahan. But take note, there is a parallel passage in 1 Timothy 5.8. Because maybe you will say, ah, ah ganun ba? So, sa ito pa, I have no more obligation to help my parents. Bahala sila. Ganun ba yan? No. Okay, take note. In 1 Timothy 5.8, ingon siya, anyone who does not provide for their relatives, especially for their own household, has denied the faith and is worse than unbeliever. So meaning, we have to provide for our relatives. We have to help our household. So that includes our parents, our brothers and sisters. Now, magtingala mo, na may conflict. Ingon diha, ang anak, dili obligado, e, tabangan ang ginikanan. Pero pag sa First Timothy, remember, both of these are written by Paul. Na may conflict. There's no conflict. Ang pasabot na, na dili obligasyon. Dapat, ang ginikanan, make sure na dili ka pabigat sa mga anak. So you cannot force your children to support you. But the children should voluntarily support their relatives, especially their households. Kasi mas nindot mong God na the children help their parents, not because they are forced, but because they love their parents. Diba? Dapat dili in compulsion. What Second Corinthians is saying that dapat ang mga ginikanan, ayaw, uh, you have to, ayaw pagsaling sa imong anak. And then sa First Timothy, mga anak, tabangan niyo mong ginikanan. Because it's better to give than to receive. So it's a very good principle. Okay, so don't misquote me. Ayaw pag na 
ah, sige lang, pag dako na ko, pabayaan na ko, ginikan na na ko. No, it's not correct. It's not correct. So, take note of this Bible principle. I hope that we can change our culture because this is God's principles in our life. And I think it is also wise. Okay, and then, okay, let's padayon ta. So, James is condemning, uh, uh, what James is con- condemning is hoarding of wealth. Ano sa'yo pasabot ng hoard? Kasi ang uban mang God, some people collect money as if they are collecting stamps. They're collecting toys. Collect, collect, collect. Padaghan kwarta, padaghan kwarta. In fact, there is a story. A certain uh, Hetty Green, she was one of the richest women in the United States. He's already, she's already dead. She has hundred million dollars. What was she like? Well, she would not buy thick clothes. Instead, she would put newspapers in her clothes to keep her warm. So, di siyang palit bagong salina. Newspaper gamitin niya para mainitan siya. And then, she would buy newspaper in the morning and then pag gabi, she will sell it kay sayang. And then, she has a warehouse full of old rugs. And then, pili on niya. Siya mismo, pili on niya ang mga white rugs and mga colored. Kaya ang white, mabaligya niya na mas mahal kaysa sa mga colored. And then, she had lots of investments in New York. Yeah, she had lots of real property. But what she do, she does not put it under her name. She put it un- 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 under the name of another person because she does not want people to know that she has uh, a residence in New York because the government might tax her. So tax evasion siya. So when Hetty Green was on her deathbed, she wouldn't let nurses to come in regular uniform. Kay gasto kung kayo. That's why the relatives would ask the nurses to change clothes para plain clothes lang para dili maatikan na mga nurse day to gihar. So ganun siya kakuripot. And then, uh, and then because she wouldn't die in peace daw, thinking that they're wasting money paying salaries of nurses to take care of her. So, you know, what's the problem of this girl? I think the problem of this girl is she's hoarding money. Uh, actually, she has no problem with money she, because she has all her needs. But the problem is she loved money so much that he w- she would not like to spend it. Naging miser na. She would not spend it. And that is very wrong. You know, take note that money in itself is not evil. Money is not evil. In fact, the Bible says, let's look at 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 10. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. Take note that money is not the root of evil, but the love of money. Some people, eager for money, have wandered from the faith and pierce themselves with many griefs. So those people that love money so much, they are unhappy people. They are not happy. You know, another word for love of money is greed. Greed. And the Bible calls it covetousness. Okay? And, you know, the sin of the rich people, the number one sin is covetousness. What do you mean by covet? Okay? Covet means I want what other people have. Parang dili ka makontento. I want more. I want more. And you know what? Money cannot satisfy you. A, you, have, you can never hear a person say that I'm rich. No rich people will say that he is rich. Because his wealth is not enough. He wants more and more. Unlike my poor, I'm very poor. Uh, well, even those who are not poor will say they are poor. Kasi, ano, dili enough yung kwarta. So, money cannot satisfy you. There, uh, you cannot say that enough is enough with money. Okay? It's unlimited. So, being covetous means you want what other people have. And then, if you notice the Ten Commandments, di ba? Ten Commandments, ang pinaka-last commandment. Do, you shall not covet. 
your neighbor's wife, your neighbor's house, things, belongings, etc. Although it's in the last of the Ten Commandments, it's also one of the most dangerous. Why? Kasi a person who is covetous would likely break the other commandments. Possible ba yan? For example, parang di ka makontento sa mong kwarta, you want more, you would steal. Di ba? In fact, in mga, mga criminal syndicates, mga kwarta, mga dato mo na sila. Pero why would they engage in crime? Mga, mga, mga drug lords. They have so much money. Why do they want to be in the illegal business? Because they get more. They get more. They get more. And then, yung mga kawatan, sophisticated, especially mga, mga mayayaman ng kwartahan, no? mga bank highs, kana yun ang target, big sum of money. Because they, they covet. It cannot be uh, not enough yung kwarta. And then, being covetous could also lead to murder. Pag dili ni makuha, ang gusto ni mo, pat yun ni mong tao para makuha. You know, being covetous is very dangerous. A lot of us thought that ang sin, those are those, those are those sin uh, that are defined by law as crimes. That's how we uh, see sin. Pag criminal act yan, sala, patay, pagpatay, rape, mga bet, kana ang ano, ang usual na ginawa na nato na na sin. But ang covet, you cannot be put to jail for covet coveting, but that is sin. And a lot of people nowadays have this problem. So, what ano ba yung ingo ni Jesus behind sa covetousness? In Luke 12:15, Jesus said, "Watch out." Pagbantay. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed. Life does not consist in an abundance of possessions. It's not how much money you have. It's not how much uh, land you have. It does not matter how much clothes or cell phones or shoes you have. Be on your guard against greed. Okay. So the question is, are you hoarding money? Well, probably a lot of us will say, well, I don't have money to hoard. But it's not all about money. We may not hoard money, but we may be hoarding things. Kasi instead of money, ilis dan nato og things. Ba Like, you know, um, when I was preparing for James for the past several weeks, Lisod kay ang James it preach in a sense that it's not because it's very difficult to understand. It's very easy to understand but very difficult to apply. Even from the start yung uh, sa amin James, diba? uh, you, you must practice what you preach. And as pastor, I'm, I'm always, always convicted whenever I preach every Sunday. It's very uncomfortable. And especially itong covetousness, I was thinking, does this also apply to me? Although I don't hoard money per se, I don't hoard money, but I, I'm thinking, maybe I'm hoarding things. Do I buy things that I don't need? And <laughs> my wife knows this. Lately, kasi, when I became pastor, I said, I want to buy books so that I can uh, uh, prepare. But the problem is, um, for the, more than one year, I keep on buying books. And then, murag walang katapusan. So, na akong wife. And I have more than a thousand books right now. Uh, electronic books, e-books. And, um, <laughs> and sabi ko, sabi problem, nagunaw na ko, I think the problem is being covetous. Um, to the point that I don't read what I have, I want something that I don't have. So I will Google, let's say, best books on ganito. And then, daghan kayo top, top, top 10 books, wala mong kuanitanan? What are the best books about the Holy Spirit? Ah, oh, wala mo ko tanan. Usar mo na anak ko. I want nine more. And then, ang, anong, the one I have, I don't read it. <laughs> and I, I feel so guilty. And I sabi ko, okay naman, for the Lord. But, but so I, I justify it's for the Lord naman. So, <laughs> um, 
So, medyo naigo ko ano eh. But I think the same applies to everyone, no? Especially sa mga ladies. <laughs> If you want to buy new clothes or new shoes, teka lang, how many shoes do you already have? Are you wearing all of them? Daot na ba? Okay. Clothes, shoes. So, I'm sure every one of us has something na we want so much. Some people, ang weakness nila cellphone, gadgets, they want the latest gadgets. Pag may bagong model, palit na bago. So, I mean, lahi-lahi tao, lahi-lahi ang, ang uh, uh, problema, no? Covetousness. And, uh, and we have to watch out. We have to watch out. And the reason why, you know, as I come to analyze it, the reason why there are lots of people who are in debt is because they spend so much than what they earn. And why do they spend so much? Okay lang unta if they are spending on their needs. Na, kay namang yun mga pobre yun na ang ilang kwarta is not enough for their daily needs. And they borrow money. Majustify mo yun. But how about most of the people? They borrow money to buy new gadgets. To, new, to buy new clothes. To buy things that they don't even need. They buy, to buy things that they only want. And then baon sila sa utang. Eh pag abot sa, wala pa niya abot ang sweldo, kurot ng kwarta. And the question is, ang mga ipang palit ba, are those things needs or are they just want? So, you know, the message for this morning is universal. Some rich people are hoarding money, but most people are hoarding something you don't need. Okay? So we have to watch out. So are we, why are we buying these things? Are we, is it because, ano, just pasikat na, na ay, naakuane, naakuane, siya wala, or since naa siya, naapugo dapat. So we have to be careful. And it's sin pala. It's sin. Okay, it's sin. So we have to be careful. Especially nowadays, social media is a breeding ground for the covetousness. Pag makita ni mo, ang mga friends ni mo, hala, tig abroad man siya. Man, ako, wala mo kay chance na mo abroad. Tapos, ano, birthday, daghan kay mga pagkaon, picture, picture. Ako, pag mag-birthday ko, wala, ara, usara kasudan. So, we covet, di ba? <laughs> so, we have to be careful what we feed because that's the problem of social media. And in fact, a lot of teenagers would get depressed if they compare themselves to their friends. Especially mga bata, mahilig kayo mag-picture ng mga, mga bagong dulaan nila, gadgets. And ikaw, kung wala ka, ma, you will feel miserable. Nga nung wala mang kuane. No? So we have to be careful. We have to be very, very careful. Okay? Okay, padayon ta. And then, uh, in verse 3, sabi na, you have hoarded wealth in the last days. Okay, what do you mean by in the last days? Well, we are now living in the last days. Last days because Jesus will be coming soon. Jesus will be coming soon. You can see all the signs of what is happening. Hapit na. We are in the last days. And then, unsa ingon ni Paul? Okay, let's look at 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 to 2. These are the signs that we are in the last days. Sabi na, people will be lovers of self. Diba? Daghan kayo mag-selfie. Lovers of self. Lovers of money. Daghan kayo lang, ganahan kwarta, no? Boastful. Galot ka ayo. Daghan kayo mag-galot. Proud. Abusive. Okay? Disobedient to their parents. Oh, mga young people. Careful, ha? Huh? Ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous. Especially sa social media, mahilig kayo manlibak. Ah, uh, Without self-control, brutal, not lovers of good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. These are the signs that we are in the last days. Okay? So you may ask, what is wrong with hoarding wealth? Okay? Hoarding wealth shows that we have wrong priorities in life. Kasi it's all about us. Hoarding for us, holding money, Holding, hoarding things, 
for us and not for other people. Parang ato lang ato. We, 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 we. So this is one of the sins of the rich people. They are holding money or wealth for their own selfish purpose. Okay? Hoarding. Number, okay, ano pa? What is the second sin of the rich people? We can find that in verse 4. Okay. Okay, verse 4. Nakabutang dere. Look, the wages you failed to pay the workers who mowed your fields are crying out against you. The cries of the harvesters have reached the ears of the Lord Almighty. So the second sin of the rich is that they acquire wealth at the expense of others. They acquire wealth at the expense of others. That is the reason why the rich gets richer and the poor gets poorer. They, the, the, some rich take advantage of the poor. You know, um, in the first century, because this was written during James' time, ang mga laborers, they work day to day. Okay? They depend on their daily wages to support their family. So that's why, uh, that's why they, they, uh, uh, they work for the rich. Kasi ang mga rich that time, mga dako kayuta, mga vineyards, no? They will, the rich will hire them. And then, at the end of the day, the rich will oppress them by not paying them. So if, what will happen to those poor? They will go hungry kasi wala sila makaon. Mga ganin, nagtrabaho sila para nasa makaon kanang gabi eh. So literally, they are uh, hand-to-mouth people. And, uh, and these rich people are oppressing them. They're not paying them at all. And sabi di, di ha, that ano, um, their cries have reached the ears of the, of the Lord Almighty. Do you know, God has a special concern for the poor. The poor has a special place in the Lord's heart. You know that? In fact, if you look at the Old Testament, okay, you look at Deuteronomy chapter 24, verses 14 to 15. Do not take advantage of a hard worker who is poor and needy whether that fellow worker is a fellow Israelite or a foreigner, pay them their wages each day before the sunset because they are poor and are counting on it. Otherwise, they may cry to the Lord against you and you will be guilty of sin. So, pasabot, Anna, you have, ang commandment ni God through Moses is that dapat, after the end of the day, you have to pay the workers Otherwise, magreklamo sila, lagot ka, sin against you. So how does this apply to us? Okay, okay. some of us are employers, no? so we have to see to it that our employees get paid. Although, nung, panahon, nung araw is everyday ang sweldo, pero karon quincenas, 15 and 30th, uh, because that is provided under the law. But some of the employers would pay weekly, so it's up to you. But under the law, at least twice a month. 15th and 30th. But the point is, on payday, you have to pay them. I have the experience of, ano, we have, may, may mga times that we forgot to pay our employees on the payday, mag-follow up na sila. So makita agad nyo na they really need that money. So we have to be careful also not to withhold them purposely uh, from our workers. And also, a lot of businessmen here in the Philippines, although they would pay their employees, that they will not give the right salary. They will not give what is required by law. Because we have a minimum wage. So, so as Christians, we have to be reminded. We, we have to give what is due them. You know why? Because these people are relying on the salary to survive. To survive. That is why, as an employer myself, I give to my employees at the very least minimum, but most of the time, they are more than minimum. Because social justice yun eh. 
it's a, we have to uh, look at it. This is their livelihood. Okay? And then some employers will say, okay, well, hindi man good maayo, tapulan, ana-ana. Well, if that's the case, then then you have to, don't hire them in the first place. Di ba? Kay, there are people who are mga kugihan, na, who deserve it, you hire them. And then mga tapulan, you don't hire them. And then I have heard employers saying, alkansi mang God, kay, kung magbayad ni saktom, alkansi. But if you look at it, it's not true. Alkansi rasa ginansya. Alkansi rasa ginansya. It's not alkansi. Kasi, if you will lose money by paying the right wages, maybe there's something wrong with your business model. So it's not the right business to go into. Mag-change ka ng business na lang. And then some people, ito, this is the usual excuse. Everybody's doing it. <laughs> I, think, I think that is the reason why uh, employers are not giving what is due to the employees because everybody's doing it. Si ano gani, ana, 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 well, we should not look at other people. No, if if pe- if the rest of the people are sinning, <laughs> we should not be sinning. We have to have the integrity, because this is the principle. We ha- we should not get rich at the expense of another people. That's the point of James. But how about the rest of us who are not employers? Ah, di na niya apply na to. Well. The same principle applies. You have to give what is due to other people. So kung nangutang ka, bayaran ni mo. And this, I think this is wrong. This is what is wrong with some people. Mangutang, pag kolektahon ni mo, sila pa masuko. Eh, this, that's a wrong attitude. Because you have to give the person what he deserves. If you borrow money without intention of paying, that is sin you have the obligation to pay your debt. So this applies to the employer, the employee. So give what is due them. Because if, not, you're, if you're not paying that person, you are enriching yourself. You're trying to get rich using the money of other people. And that is sin. So we have to give back what the other person deserves. No? If utang mo, bayarang utang sa inyong kasalabutan. In verse 5, you have lived on earth in luxury and self-indulgence. You have fattened yourselves in the day of slaughter. So the third scene of the rich people, according to James, is that they live on earth in luxury and self-indulgence. You know, luxury is a waste. Luxury is a waste. And waste is sin. Okay, there is a story, okay, um, about a sultan, an, an oil-rich sultan. He purchased 19 Cadillacs, one for each of his 19 wives, and he paid extra to have the cars lengthened. He also bought two Porsche, six Mercedes-Benz, and a $40,000 worth of speedboat and a truck for hauling it. And to add of that, he bought 16 refrigerators, $47,000 of women's luggage, two Florida grapefruit trees, two reclining chairs, and one slot machine. His total bill was $1.5 million lang naman. And he had to pay $200, $200,000 to have everything delivered to his country. So, grabe ang pag luxury And, you know, now is a bad time to live in luxury. Now is a very bad time because a lot of people are suffering right now. A lot of people are suffering. A lot of people are in poverty. A lot of people do not have work because of this coronavirus pandemic. So we have to be sensitive. We have to be sensitive uh, that's why, especially social media, be careful in posting uh, well, lots of food when people have no food to eat. Parang, we have to be sensitive. This is not good, no? And take note that there is a difference between enjoying what God has given us and living in luxury. 
there's a difference. God has given us good gifts. It's it's okay to enjoy what you, what God has given you, but like na yun extreme na parang galot na kayo. If you live a life of luxury, it's it's as if you're saying uh, you are giving ad, you are giving temptation to other people to covet. You're causing other people to sin. Okay? So we should not waste our money in living selfishly because there are too many people who need that money. Remember the parable of Jesus yung, uh, about uh, the rich man and, uh, and the beggar Lazarus? Diba? See, Lazarus is a beggar. Uh, he would eat whatever Lazarus will throw out. And then he's, he stays outside the house. And the time came, the beggar Lazarus died. He was carried to Abraham's side. And the rich man also died. He was sent to hell where he was tormented. Sabi ni, ni, ano, ni, ni rich man, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. Please send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in the water and cool my tongue because I am agony in this fire. Unsa ito bag ni Abraham? Son, remember that in your lifetime, you receive your good things while this poor guy, Lazarus, received bad things. But now he is comforted here and you are in agony. So we have to be careful. Baka kita ang rich guy who is enjoying life so much on earth and pag abot sa panahon, nata sa impyerno, living in agony. Okay, let's be careful. And let's continue. Verse 5, You have fattened yourself in the day of slaughter. Alam mo yun, pag uh, those who raise livestock like pig, pakaunin mo daghan, sige, pakaun lang, enjoy. Kay hapit na. <laughs> Katayon na ka na ako. Ha? Katayon ka na ako. And the same is true with the, with the rich unbelievers. Sige, magpadato mo. Sige. Bantay lang mo. Sige, patambok mo. Pag ito yung adlaw, ihawon mo sa impyerno. <laughs> okay? That is why, diba, I told you the last time na usually, most of the time, most of the time, but not all, most of the time, ang mga rich, musalig silang kwarta, they will not trust in the Lord because they think that their life is so secure. But in reality, money cannot give us security. And they have to be careful. There's a warning here that the time will come, uh, they will be slaughtered. It refers to the day of judgment. So all of us, we should not envy the rich. We should not envy the mga, mga sultan who bought a lot of cars. We should not envy them. Because if they don't have Jesus in their heart, their time will come. And you do not like to be where they, they, are, they will be going. Okay? So we should not envy them. Okay. Okay, last verse. Verse 6. You have condemned and murdered the innocent one who was not opposing you. Okay. Who is James referring to? Some people say that, ah, maybe James was referring to Jesus Christ. Remember, Jesus was condemned. He was uh, found guilty. Although he was not really guilty, he was murdered. And he did not oppose those people who killed him. But of course, um, I think verse 6 is the continuation of verses 1 to 5. So ang pasabutan na, ang nire-refer ni James are those rich people. James is saying that these rich people are condemning and murdering the poor innocent people. How can the rich condemn the poor. You see, during those times, first century, the rich are oppressing the poor by filing cases in court against the poor. Uh, they file cases against the poor and then uh, they will grab the land of the poor and then the poor can have no money to defend themselves because it's ang ang lawsuit. And if ever they want to defend themselves, 
the rich would bribe the judges. Ganun ko grabe nung first 100, uh, first 100 AD. Ganun ko grabe. And then, during those times, pag dilik ka kabayad utang, you can be put to jail. Diba? If you look at the parable of Jesus, the culture that time, if you fail to pay your debt, you can be imprisoned. And a lot of people, since they have no money to pay, they sell themselves as slaves. They sell themselves or their, their children, their wives as slaves so that they can repay their debt. Ganun ka grabe yung social injustice nung araw. But, uh, but nowadays, it also happens, no? There are rich people who take advantage of the uh, judicial system by filing cases against the poor who has no means to defend themselves, no? Land grabbing, no? Ito yung mga daghan kay mga inana. Mga greed, gane. Because of their greed, they, they grab the land of poor people and take advantage of the system. And then another way is the, the rich murder the poor. So what do you mean by that? So tinood, tinood patyon gin nila? Well, well, I think James is speaking uh, figuratively. When the rich enrich themselves at the expense of the poor, what will happen? They deprive the poor of money to pay for their food. So kung walay makaon ng mga pobre, they will die of starvation. In that, in that sense, the, the rich are murdering the poor. Kan ang pasabot ni James. So, kung dili insakto ang mga wages, gikawatan ang pobre, parang murag gikawatan. Instead of paying the right wages to them, they withhold, they, they, they steal from the poor. And in effect, since they don't have enough money to, to live, these rich people are murdering the poor. Okay? So let's examine our lives today. No? How do we use our money? Are we using our money to enrich ourselves at others' expense? Or do we unfairly deprive others of what is due them? Pag naiutang, dili bayaran? Or dili bayaran ilang gitrabaho? In using our money, are we building up other people or are we destroying other people? Okay, so let's recap what we've learned today. No? So in summary, James is giving a warning against the rich people who hoard money for themselves. Padaghanay ng kwarta. Number two, they cheat against their workers because they do not pay them the, the right wages or they do, not, they do not pay them at all. Three, the rich people live in luxury and self-indulgence for their own pleasure, not knowing that, that the end will come, that they are going to their slaughter. And fourthly, they, they condemn, they take advantage of the poor, they murder the innocent by uh, letting people die of starvation. So these are the warning of James. So from these warnings, we can learn what we should do ang kabaligtaran. So we should not hoard money uh, for ourselves and we should not acquire wealth illegally or unfairly. Dapat, when we earn money, dapat yung proper way. No? We should not take advantage of other people. Dapat sakto lang, no? tamang paraan. Honest business. No? And third, we should not live in luxury because it will make other people covet. It will cause other people to sin. And we should not use our money to oppress other people, to condemn people, to murder people. In a sense, that we should not use our money to take advantage of other people. You know, according to James Moffat, a person's treatment of money is the most decisive test of his character. How he makes his money and how he spends it. It will show your character. You are honest if you do business honestly. Okay? You are selfish if you are 
selfish in using your money. If, you're, if you are generous in helping other people, then that will show your character. So how should Christians spend our money? So we must, sabi ni Jesus, we must store up treasures on, in, uh, tre we should store up treasures in heaven. Remember in Matthew 6 verse 19 to 20, sabi ni Jesus, Do not store for yourselves treasures on, on earth where moats and vermin destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moats and vermin do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. In other words, we should not hoard money. We should not hoard earthly possessions. We should not hoard clothes or, or, or cars or houses because there is no security in wealth. There's no security. Uh, money, riches are uncertain. Malabo yan eh. Instead, we have to store treasures in heaven. And how do we do that? How do we store treasures in heaven? Remember, if all the things that we have are not our own. We may possess them, we may hold it, but we do not own it. Who is the owner? God. We are stewards. Stewards at sa kwarta na gihatag niya. So we have to use our money to build up the church. Okay? Give up, give to the tithes, help the poor, give missions, reach out for the lost. Because the mission of the church, if I remember our mission vision statement, is Matthew 28, 19 to 20. We have to reach out for the lost because that is God's will for us to make disciples. And we make disciples by reaching out for the lost, for God's kingdom. We give money for God's kingdom. We invest in eternity. So, but, so that when the time comes, masabi na to na, Lord, kanimang gihatag ninyo na ako, gigamit na ako para sa imong himaya so that you may be glorified. You know, in Acts 20 verse 35, it's blessed to give than to receive. You can use your money to invest in saving souls, in helping people to get to heaven. And also, napaisa, last na ni, 1 Timothy, verse, uh, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 70 to 19. This is important. Because this is what the Lord wants. The Lord wants, sabi niya, we have to command those who are rich not to be arrogant. Alam mga kwartahan, ayaw paghambog. We should not put our hope in wealth. Why? Because ang mga kwarta, they are uncertain. Instead, we have to put our hope in God who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. Then, command them to do good. We have to do good. We have to use our money to do good, to give to charity, to do good deeds, to be generous, to help the poor, to share what we have. And in this way, we lay up treasures in heaven. Okay? We lay up treasure for themselves as a firm foundation for the coming age so that they may hold, take hold of the life that is truly life. This message is for every one of us. Don't say that I am not rich, therefore it doesn't apply to me. Do you know, ang rich, being rich and being poor is relative. You know, it's relative. And if you check Google, kahit Google lang, the poorest of the poor in this world, in the entire world, huh, they have no money, uh, they have no food to eat, they only eat one meal a day. In, in fact, minsan, no, not one meal pa nga eh. They have no clothes to wear. They have no house to live. So if you have a house, you are rich compared to these people. If you can eat three meals a day, you are rich. And the, the problem on God is we compare ourselves to others. And if we compare that, if we compare ourselves to Lushotan, or 
or Donald Trump. So, very poor kita. But if you compare yourselves, yung sa mga African country, starving, ka ng bukog na, mga, if you see the internet, mga picture, mga bukog na lang, you will say, I, I'm very blessed, Lord. I'm very blessed. In fact, we are very blessed. The fact that you are here, the fact that you have clothes to wear, we are very blessed, so we have to count our blessings. So this message also applies to us because we are rich. How are we using our money? Those who, are, who have more, more are demanded of them. Those who are less, less are demanded of them. It's not how much you give, how much, no? It's not, it's your heart. Just like the widow, diba? the widow, uh, naghatag siya, na usaka di- uh, usaka nickel or dime, I think. Sabi ni Lord, he, she has given everything. She has. Unlike the, the rich, he has given a lot of money. Sabi, they, sabi Jesus, these rich people are giving out of their abundance. The Lord sees our heart. Now, some of you may say, I'm, I don't have money. I'm still a student. But you know, you have time. It's not all about money. How about your time? Time is money. How are you using your time? If you are using your time to serve God, that is the proper way of using what the Lord has given you. Because you are investing for eternity. Okay? So don't say that itong message, kwarta, it applies to everyone. What, your money, your time, your possession, how are we using it? Are, you, are we using it for God's glory? The world says, love money and use people. That's the, that's the teaching of the word. Love money, use people. But the Lord says, love people, use money. Okay? Again, sabi ng world, love money, use people. But the Lord says, love people, use money. So are, are we a good steward? Okay, can we, so can we please stand up? Let's pray.